yeah so real quick folks i want to keep talking about this this whole i want to talk about leaders like that's that's really i think where it comes down what it comes down to i want to talk about leaders so as i mentioned if anybody if anybody knows uh that their brothers and sisters are in need and uh offer them spiritual pleasantries as opposed to helping them in their physical need what good is that um the other day i was watching so there's a fella i think it's i think the channel's called the the national rational the rational national it's a he's a canadian guy out of ontario um david and he uh he did a video where he was um, offering an opinion about a clip he watched from Fox News with um, with Piers Morgan, the British the British pundit, the British talk show host, and uh, and Jesse Jesse Waters, Fox News host. And so I'm watching I'm watching David's thing on it. It was good. He had a good take on it. Um, I didn't. I think I did know this, but I, I, you just, you can't, kind of can't imagine. I didn't realize, I didn't realize the danger that Kinder Surprises presented. So Piers Morgan was, was using that as a, obviously he was using that as a, a line about, about gun safety. And he was, you know, he was making some observations from the British perspective, how, what it looks like, what these kinds of events look like from England. And Jesse Waters said, you know, well, you know, this the whole reason we have these guns is because of because of your king. Okay, because of the Revolutionary War. I I sure the War of Independence. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. And and Morgan's, yes, I we we get it, we understand. And then um Piers Morgan talked about the the Kinder Surprise, and Jesse Waters said, it, it do you blame forks for people being obese? And I think Piers Morgan said yes, because that kind of threw Waters a little bit. But he came back and said, no, you don't. You know, he's, we, don't blame, we don't blame the forks for people's eating habits. Uh, and he, he said, he, he said that, that, that famous line, guns don't kill people, people kill people. I remember the first time I ever heard that. I was, I was working in North Carolina. I was working at, uh, at Cahan. And uh, a gentleman, we were talking about we were talking about gun safety, gun control, and the guy said, "You know, guns don't kill people; people kill people." And you're like, "Oh yeah, that's profound. I I get that." And listen, not wrong, right? Guns guns are a tool; they're they're just they're a hammer; they're a, they're a, a skill saw; they're a fork. They're they're a tool. Now this particular tool in the wrong hands can can do harm to a multitude of people in seconds from a great distance. But let's just stick with they're a tool. Okay. So guns don't kill people, people kill people. So we recognize that people kill people. Okay, great, that's awesome. We we can we can say that. We recognize that people kill people. We can recognize that that a lot of the times in these in these shootings in these preventable tragedies the um the assailant bought the guns legally they didn't go through the black market they didn't smuggle them across from canada or mexico or wherever that happens to be um they they acquired them legally they acquired the guns legally, they acquired the magazines legally, they acquired the, the gear legally, they acquired the ammunition legally. All of it. We also know that with the statistics that are already being gathered, so we wouldn't even have to do any, any more deep research on this, with, this, with the statistics that are already being gathered, we know that people who've committed these acts, committed these atrocities, um, 
they're mo- they're most likely that they've committed other very particular acts. Um, I believe domestic violence is a huge red flag that a lot of like a lot of these and it's generally guys, a lot of these guys um, in the past have been arrested, if not convicted of domestic violence. So we know that there's ways we can we can start. OK, wait a second. I can draw a line here. I can draw a correlation. We also know that we could do psychological testing. And um, it, it, it might cost the person who wants the gun uh, a little bit, but hey, it's right, it'll, it'll get them what they want. It'll make the rest of the people in the country feel safe. We know that there's, okay, so if guns don't kill people, people kill people, we know that we could do something to help figure out, to help probably not 100%. But there are ways that we could, there are ways that we could determine in many cases if a potential buyer should be allowed to buy one of these highly effective tools for killing. We know that brings me to the next piece of scripture that popped in my brain also comes from from James's letter if anyone knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it it is sin for them that comes from James chapter 4 if anyone knows the good they ought to do but doesn't do it that is sin for them so here's why I was bringing up the whole Jesse Waters thing here's why I was I was um I'm thinking along this piece of scripture. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. We okay, let's let's say that's the the great truth of the modern age. But we choose our leaders choose not to do anything about the people who are buying these guns legally to do this kind of thing. At some point at some point I think we I think we need to lay the responsibility of these things, at least some of the responsibilities for these atrocities on the feet of the people who are supposed to be leading our countries who choose, who choose not to do anything to protect us. Like, for example, any kind of screening, any kind of, if you have a conviction for a particular crime, you may not have this. Okay, you, you have the right to bear arms. We'll, we'll, we'll acknowledge that, but you don't have the right to bear, you know, so, okay. Um, your psychological profile tells us that, hey, it might be, we might have something to watch for here. You're allowed to buy a musket. You're not allowed to buy something that has 15 rounds and one in the chamber. You're allowed to buy a single shot 22, but you're not allowed to buy an AR-15 with the special, you know, banana magazine that holds 647 rounds. We can do these kinds of things if we choose to, but we don't. Our, our leaders don't choose to. And I think the statistic I, I heard yesterday was 60, 61%, 61% of Americans favor, and this was before the Lewiston shooting, 61% of Amer- Americans favor some kind of gun control on semi-automatic weapons. 61%. So it's not even the people anymore. It's, it's the leadership. It's, it's a very particular group within the leadership. Yeah, we know we should do something. Yeah, we know. Guns aren't killing people. People are. But we're not going to. We're not going to do anything to get in the way of that person's right to to own one of these weapons of weapons of war. And I know you'll know oh, AR-15, they're not a weapon of war, it's just the way they look. All right. You you can do a, you can do a lot of damage with them. 
<sighs> so, Amen.